Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be doing a quick review for Inked, A Tale of Love on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this game is a narrative-driven puzzle platformer with a beautiful hand-drawn art style. It was released on August 26th of 2021, and it currently has a sale price of $9.99 on the Nintendo Switch eShop. It was published by Pixmain, however it's been developed by Somnium Games, and it has an overall download size of about 3.5 gigabytes. Now our question for today is will this truly end in a tale of love for this game, or unfortunately a tale of disappointment? Well let's find out in today's review, and don't forget that if you do like the content, to please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Now if we start with the storyline. You are playing as the Nameless Hero, a samurai who retires his sword at the beginning of your adventure, to live out the rest of his life in peace with his love by his side. Tandem to this is the story of the illustrator, who unfortunately is going through a difficult event in his life. Now the impacts of this event are felt in the drawn universe, and our hero must take up a magical pen to try and set them straight and ultimately reunite with his love. Now diving deeper into the events of the story, would result in spoilers, and as this is a narrative-driven game, experiencing it for yourself is very important. However, I can say that the topics of love and loss are central to the theme and presented in a heartfelt way, and the imagery of a world coming apart through an artist's drawings translates very well. So now if we take a look at the gameplay. The gameplay is set up in a simple way, focusing mainly on puzzle solving to progress, as there is no jumping or precise platforming required here. Rather, with the help of your magical pen, you will be able to manipulate the environment in different ways by moving and rotating certain specific objects in order to solve various environmental puzzles. Occasionally, you will also have to physically move certain objects or switches directly with your character, but once again, the focus is on the solution, not the precise control of your character. The puzzles start out very simple, introducing gradually different types of objects and manipulations, eventually progressing to more complex, multi-layered puzzles. There is also an optional objective of finding hidden items throughout the game in the form of paintings that vary for each chapter of the game. The difficulty progression is well delivered throughout the game, However, being very familiar with puzzle platformers, I never felt it got to the level I would call difficult, with only about two or three of the puzzles actually forcing me to reflect for a 5-10 to 10 minute period. Personally, I would have enjoyed the final chapter of the game to possibly really offer a higher level of challenge, but overall the puzzling was still relatively satisfying. So now if we quickly switch to the controls. As I said earlier, the direct control of your character is very simple, using the left joystick to move and the A button to interact with the environment when necessary. Slightly more complexity goes into the environmental manipulation controls. By hitting Y, it locks your character and switches to the environment. At this point, pressing B allows you to cycle through the various elements you can manipulate, and while in direct control of an object, the L and R bumpers will allow you to rotate it. Lastly, when exploring for hidden paintings, you can also hit the X button that allows you to move around the environment with a magnifying glass. A nice touch here is that the game also uses HD rumble very effectively during the gameplay to emphasize some of the puzzle solutions. Overall, the control scheme here is easy to grasp and quickly becomes intuitive. The only slight issue is that we can tell this game seems to have been originally designed for a mouse and keyboard. And there were a few occasional puzzles where getting an object into the exact position you wanted with the controller was a slight challenge, but not enough to ruin your overall experience. So now we move to the graphics and sound. The main draw for a lot of people here will be the absolutely beautiful, hand-drawn aesthetic this game goes for. And on the visual front, I have to say, this game truly delivers. It uses mostly a blue penmanship over a white background. However, what is understated at first is how brilliantly they use splashes of color to highlight certain parts of the environment or add emotional depth to the more narrative sections. Talking about those narrative sections, they are fully voiced, and the voice talent is extremely fitting here, with a calm and serene voice at first, and as the story progresses, the tone and the dialogue of the narrator follows perfectly. 
Lastly, we have the music and sound effects, which once again are very fitting. The soundtrack here is mostly atmospheric, but once again evolves perfectly with the storyline, helping you become even more immersed in the game. Now, just before we move to the verdict, I do want to talk about the overall playtime for this game. I finished this game easily under three hours. However, I did not put too much focus on finding all the hidden paintings. Now, this will be considered by most as a very short game, and I honestly won't argue against that. I would, however, compare my experience with this game to the kind of experience you get from a game like Limbo, where the runtime is short, but you feel fulfilled nonetheless. So now for the verdict. And if you're unfamiliar with my grading scale, you can go take a quick look at it in the description of the video. Now, in this case, I will be giving Inked a Tale of Love a 7.5, putting it on the high end of a good game. Ultimately, the runtime is short, but the game is a narrative-driven one. It had a message to deliver, and it does so in very nice form. Although I did compare this game to something like Limbo, it wasn't quite on par with that game because of the lack of endgame difficulty, which therefore resulted in slightly less satisfaction from completing the game. Now, I do think that this was deliberate as to focus on the narrative aspect at the end that really does take center stage. But overall, this results in a beautiful and enjoyable experience, but maybe one that you can wait for a sale to be able to enjoy. So now it's all up to you. What do you think? Are you going to be picking up Inked A Tale of Love? You can let me know in the comment section down below. And on the way out, don't forget that if you did enjoy the content, to hit the like button, consider subscribing to the channel if you aren't already, and hitting that notification bell so you know when all my future content comes out. And as usual, I hope I'll see all of you in my next video. Love prevails all obstacles, so our two lovebirds reach the end of the forest. Their goal is but a step away.